Hello and welcome to episode three of Rock Talk. I am Pastor Jared, and just want to welcome you. But also, I, I guess I I don't know. I, I gotta clear something up again. Like, I I'm getting weird messages and weird comments from you guys um, about about the show. Like, I you seem to enjoy it. But your your questions about the name, I guess you don't do you not like the name Rock Talk. Is it just there, I'm getting questions about like some weird fan theories on why I named it Rock Talk. But I've told you, I, I've said it in every episode now. I only meant to talk about it in the first episode as an introduction. I mentioned the last one because there was there was a question and there's more questions coming in. Um, but it, guys, everyone, grab your Bibles, turn to Matthew 16, 18. I'm going to read this in a couple different versions, just, just so we get this. So it says, and I say to you that you are Peter on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades death. This is amplified by the way, will not overpower it by, pre uh, preventing the resurrection of the Christ. Uh, let's do CSB. That's what Tristan's Bible, study Bible is the Charles Spurgeon Bible. <laughs> just kidding um, and I and I also say to you that you are Peter and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overpower let's do one more let's find so we've done ESV let's just keep going let's just see let's find a good one here just so you guys believe. here we go message here we go this is a mouthful Jesus came back God bless you Simon son of Jonah you didn't get that answer out of books or from teachers. My Father in Heaven, God Himself, let you in on the secret of who I really am. And now I'm going to tell you who you are, or who you are, really are. You are Peter, a rock. This is the rock on which I will put together my church. A church so expansive with energy that not even the gates of hell will be able to keep it out. So clearly... We can see in that scripture, um, that, that whole story there. And so I don't know why I'm getting other questions and things about like the name. Um, so hopefully that puts it to rest is that, that, that scripture there in Matthew and why we named this daily devotion rock talk. So let's jump into episode three, day three of rock talk. So I say, I am grieved that the right hand of the most high has changed. I will remember the Lord's works. Yes, I will remember your ancient wonders. I will reflect on all you have done and meditate on your actions. Psalm 77, 10 through 12, CSB, Charles Spurgeon Bible. Um, that's a little inside joke there. Okay, God's word. And again, this is um, Upon Awakening with Jackie Hill Perry. Um, again, we will switch them up, but you know, just... I'll do a few at a time so we kind of get used to the style of a writer and maybe every week or so we'll swap them out. We'll see. We'll just play it by ear. God's word and God's nature must inform your emotions. In saying this, I don't mean feelings are unnecessary when in fact emotions are useful for many things. As, an, as um, utilitarian as they might be, however, they become a danger to us and to the world whenever they are detached from God's word. For example, think of the 10 spies who looked at the giants in Canaan, fear or felt fear and forgot God, or consider David who walked his roof, observing a woman in covenant with another, feeling passion and forgot purity of heart. Or Peter, who, again, rock talk, Peter, or Peter, who inhabited a garden, not only with his Lord, but also with the men into whose hands his Lord had been delivered and his Lord was being taken. Peter felt a lot of things, maybe fear, maybe zeal. Either way, after a sword was raised, an ear was removed. Feeling what he felt, he forgot the kingdom. When emotions are given undeserved supremacy, they can lead us to respond to ourselves, others, or other circumstances in ways that reflect the emotion more than does their creator. That's good. At this point, I mean, that's bad, but that, <laughs> that word is good. At this point, by singling out the negative influence emotions can have, one might see emotions as an enemy of faith. That too would be an irrational or even emotional way of seeing things. Emotions are good. 
For not only did our Lord make them, but he also has them. The issue then is not simply uh, what or how we feel, but, but how what we've inherited from Adam leads us to respond to our feelings. To say it another way, emotions aren't the problem, the flesh is. So then, in becoming more holy, doing away with emotions won't serve us. So I'm going to pause there really quick and say, so for all of you who are like, you know what, I'm just going to become, I'm going to become a stoic then. Obviously we're seeing that's not quite the way. Um, there's, uh, I've been recently reading um, some teachings on Stoicism. I know there's a few guys in the church who we have conversations on teachings of like Epicurus and um, just different uh, Stoic. I don't know why Epicurus is the first one that came to mind. I don't even think he's one of the more, well, I mean, he obviously is known. But anyways, um, um, the different teachings and whatnot. And there's some wisdom there. And there is some good stuff to glean there about control and self-control. But that doesn't mean we completely get rid of emotions um, as if they're a completely bad thing. After all, Jesus did create them. Um, what will, or what will is, what will is that God breathed word? I don't quite understand that. Let me read that one more time. What will, okay, I'm going to back up. In becoming more holy, doing away with emotions won't serve us. What will, there we go is that God breathed word, both written and living, written in every narrative, epistle, prophet, and psalm, and living in the enfleshed God of heaven, who after ascending to the glorious right hand together with his Father, sent the Spirit who once hovered the waters to not just hover over, but fully indwell the people for whom Christ died. These people will fill all kinds of ways all of the time, but they can and must reflect God's nature when they do. Okay, so to wrap it up is we can feel these emotions. We just have, so this is the difference with between the Stoics and I'm sorry, you know, Doug and others, like if I get this a little wrong, um, but the idea there is that rather than having no emotion and trying to rid oneself of emotion or, you know, tamp things down so, so tight that you, you don't have, you don't respond to that, the idea here is to have our emotions, to feel our emotions, not to control them and push them down, but to be able to experience them and still live in accordance with what the word says. All right, with that, I know that has been a bit of a challenge for us. Let's go ahead and pray. Lord, I just pray that you help each and every one of us to not go too far to the extreme where our current world, we go to the extreme of just running with whatever we feel. And our feelings become our gods and our direction for the day. And not to go all the way back into history and swing the pendulum too far the other way and just become non-emotional and to think of our, our bodies and our flesh and our feelings as bad and wicked, something to separate ourselves from, but to be able to feel, have that balance, feel those emotions that we were born with, we were created with, but act on them in a godly, Christ-centered kingdom way. That when we aren't feeling good, instead of just responding poorly, we can see that as a, a check engine indicator and know that something is wrong and we need to figure out what it is and get back in alignment. And when we feel excited, whatever our emotions are, Lord, that we can use those to glorify you and experience you better in this world, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, thank you for joining me on episode three of Rock Talk. I will see you tomorrow and we'll jump in to day four. 